A butterfly flaps its wings in China and causes a tornado in Texas. Who hasn't heard of the butterfly effect? A new paper now says that the butterfly effect might be even more dramatic than we thought. You don't need butterflies, some wiggling molecule do. Let's have a look. The atmosphere around our planet is governed by the famous Navier-Stokes equation. It's a non-linear equation that's notoriously hard to solve and gives rise to turbulence and chaos. If you figure out how to solve it, the Clay Institute has a $1 million prize on it, so if you can spare some time on the weekend, maybe give it a go. The 1960s were in some sense simpler times than today, but solving the Navier-Stokes equation was as difficult then as now. This is why at what Lorenz in his 1969 paper on the butterfly effect used a very simplified set of equations. They were inspired by what's going on in Earth's atmosphere, but far from the real thing. It's now known as the Lorenz model. The Lorenz model has become the most famous example for chaos. This is because if you solve the equations, their solutions are very sensitive to the exact starting point. Make it a tiny little bit different and they'll look similar initially, but then diverge until they're completely uncorrelated. You can plot the solutions as curves in an abstract three-dimensional space, and they converge to a peculiar shape that coincidentally resembles a butterfly. You can find the sensitivity to the exact initial conditions in many other systems, like the double pendulum. It's the hallmark of chaos. This is often what people think of as the butterfly effect, the sensitivity to initial conditions. But really, Lorenz was saying more than that. He was saying that small disturbances in one place can grow to large disturbances elsewhere. Though he wasn't talking about butterflies in his paper, but about seagulls. Then again, you know, for a physicist, that's basically the same anyway. But his model doesn't use coordinates on Earth's surface. I mean, look, this is what the solutions look like. And yes, that kind of looks like that new motorway entry they're building down the road. But generally, the Earth is somewhat more spherical. Lorenz's famous paper about the butterfly effect can't tell us what the effect of a butterfly in China is because the model he used doesn't have any notion of places to begin with. Lorenz made it very clear that he was just conjecturing the effects of a localized small disturbance, a seagull crapping, flapping, I mean flapping. He turned out to be correct, though as so often in science, the true story is vastly more complicated. For one thing, the weather isn't just chaotic. It's sometimes chaotic and sometimes not. This is why on some days in some places a weather forecast is good for two weeks and elsewhere they can't even get the next morning right. The other thing is that, well, we don't have data for butterflies flapping in China, so no one could actually test whether Lawrence was right. But scientists did confirm from observations that perturbations from scales like maybe 100 kilometers do end up influencing much larger areas, potentially the weather on the entire planet. So basically, Lorenz was right. And it's not just about size, it's more importantly also about energy. It's that changes which require only very little energy can end up moving around huge amounts of energy. For a long time, I've had secret plans to write a novel about a superhero who uses the butterfly effect to amplify tiny changes with huge consequences. Unfortunately, Benedict Jacker beat me to it. So rather than writing novels, I'm here on YouTube talking about papers that got recently published in PRL. Speaking of which, the new paper now looked at the question just how small a disturbance can be to influence larger scales. Is a butterfly large enough? Do you need an elephant flapping its ears? Maybe a jumbo jet? Well, they find, amazingly and rather concerningly, that even the motion of molecules are enough to trigger turbulence all over the place. That's right, molecules. They write that their computer simulation suggests that even the inevitably present molecular noise is sufficient to trigger spontaneous stochasticity. This is a super important result because it affects our understanding of so many systems from the climate to nuclear fusion to galaxy formation. 
You see, since they can't solve the Navier-Stokes equation, scientists just approximate solutions with computer simulations. But these simulations always use some grid of finite size. And if you think that there's a butterfly effect going on below the scale of your grid, then you have to assume that there's some energy propagating up from the small to the large sizes. In practice, they do this by adding some sort of noise. You might then think that if computers get more powerful, you can make the grid smaller, and eventually you'll capture all sources of noise and get much more accurate predictions. But this new paper shows that this is basically impossible, because you'd have to go down to the size of molecules. Concretely, they write that for climate models, even if the projected goal of one kilometer horizontal resolution in the next decade is achieved, such refined resolution will not obviate the need for stochastic models. They don't say anything about galaxy formation, but I expect this to matter there too. And maybe Jonathan Oppenheim, with his post-quantum gravity and the stochastic noise, may want to have a close look at this paper. I'm sure you love science as much as I do. But what science really wants is that you understand it. And there's no better place to do that than Brilliant.org. On Brilliant, you find courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. It's a fresh and new approach to learning that makes growing your knowledge easy and fun. I've learned so much there. All their courses come with interactive visualizations and follow-up questions. Some also have videos for demonstration experiments or executable Python scripts. This really gives you a feeling for what's going on. Whether you want to know more about solar panels, neural networks, astrophysics, special relativity or computational biology, brilliant has you covered. I even have my own course there, that's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It's a beginner's course and covers topics such as interference, superpositions and entanglement, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue learning more about quantum objects or maybe quantum computing. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.